All that has to change. I've had a lot of feedback to the video. The CLI is dead. What are you going to do about it? And these questions come at a time of transition. And understandably, this adds to the worries of folks. Since creating that video, I've had quite a few likes and some people who either don't like me or don't like the video or don't like the fact that networking is changing. But since creating that video, I've had a number of questions such as, is CCNA, CCMP, CCIE certification still good? What should I be learning? Should I learn Python or should I learn CCNA? Or should I learn Python or should I learn CCMP? And keeping with that theme, I saw this published on LinkedIn from a recruitment agent talking about next generation network engineers. So the point is what we're looking for is not just to continue on the same path, we want to leap into the future. It's quite interesting to see that recruitment agents are talking about the fact that network engineers need to change their skill sets. And they say that skills that we need to learn in order to adapt to the rapidly changing market is firstly programming. And they warn that network engineers that don't learn Python or programming skills, as an example, could be left behind. We've seen that predicted in the Gartner Report, Magic Quadrant for Data Center Networking, where they talk about the CLI being replaced by programming. The recruitment agent continues talking about the development philosophy, where you have to learn about tools such as Puppet and Chef. Think about Git. Think about other development tools and ways of doing things. This is quite an old presentation from DevNet, so from July 2015, where they were already talking about how software is eating the world. So they talk about skills such as Python, Linux, REST APIs, Git, GitHub, DevOps, OpenStack, APEC EM, ACI, Open Daylight, Overlays, TailF, and a number of other skills. Cisco DevNet have been talking about this for quite a while when comparing whether you should become a CCIE or learn Python. And what's interesting is recruitment agents are now talking about the same skills. So again, we've got programming, we've got a development philosophy. They talk about Linux. They're seeing an increasing amount of job advertisements and companies looking for network engineers with an in-depth knowledge of Linux. They mentioned the fact that Nexus is built on Linux, Arista is built on Linux, Cumulus Linux runs Linux. A lot of projects such as Docker, Ansible, OpenStack rely very heavily on Linux. So that's a skill that they say you should pick up. They talk about the fact that disruption is coming
Don't wait. Start learning new skills today. They also mention hypervisor technology. They say that the hypervisor isn't just for server guys anymore. So we as network engineers should learn about hypervisors. So think about VMware, ESXi. Think about NSX and other hypervisor technologies. So as an example, KVM and Zen. It's important that you have a deep protocol knowledge. Make sure that you understand how protocols work, especially for interoperability. In this case, they talk about Cisco, Palo Alto Networks, and Juniper skills. They also mention some other vendors. But the moral of the story is understand the technology, then it's easy to move from one vendor to another. In my personal experience, I come from a Cisco background, but it was very easy to pick up HPE, Provision, Aruba, and Comware because I understood the underlying technology. If you understand BGP, it's not going to be that difficult to pick up another vendor's implementation of BGP. Don't just understand the commands, understand what you're doing with the protocol. They also talk about collaboration. You need to collaborate with other engineers in other disciplines. So that's an interesting take from a recruitment agent. DevNet have been talking about this for a long time. I've mentioned that the CLI is dead. And in a previous video, I've mentioned the Cisco white paper demystifying SDN for the network engineer. I'll link these videos and references below. But the moral of the story is, don't get left behind. Now I am already a CCIE, so I've got a good foundation in networking. I've done networking for many years. But I've also done programming over the years. So this convergence of programming, network automation, and network programmability is to me fantastic. I see my love of networking and my love of programming coming together. And this convergence is allowing me to better work with networks and manipulate what networks do. If you're new to networking, you need to decide what you want to do. Are you going to become a programmer? Please try again. Or are you going to become a network engineer? Please try again. Or are you going to become a network engineer with programming skills? For the future the recommendation coming from a lot of sources is understand networking but also understand programming. A lot of network engineers don't want to become programmers. Please try again. And a lot of network engineers will say don't become a programmer, do what you're good at. In other words, do networking. Please try again. But I think you need to be a network engineer with an appreciation at least of programming methodologies and, and basic programming. There's no harm in understanding programming. If you're going to interact with a REST API on an APEC EM, you need to understand what an APEC EM is as a SDN controller. You need to understand what a REST API is, and you need to understand a little bit of programming to understand that interaction. But for a lot of real-world deployments today, a lot of people would prefer to use Ansible rather than pure Python for automation. So pick up Ansible, pick up other skills such as Puppet and Chef, pick up Linux. Really important to know Linux these days with the huge proliferation of open source. Understand Linux, understand Ansible, understand Python, and as I always like to say, keep on learning. Learn to learn, learn to pick up knowledge, learn to apply your knowledge as quickly as you can to make yourself more valuable. I, I told myself how to program computers when I was a kid, um, and 
Well, I, I read a lot of computer magazines, um, and there was... Uh... Um, somebody could say, um, in fact, people do, uh, that factory packs are really expensive, and that's just the way they'll always be, because that's the way they've been in the past. Um, you're like, well, no, that's, that's pretty dumb, you know, because if, if, uh, if you apply that reasoning to anything new, that ha then you, you wouldn't be able to, to ever get to that new thing. Right. Um, so, um, you know, it's like you can't say, oh, you know, horses, well, nobody wants a car because horses are great and we're used to them and they can eat grass and there's lots of grass all over the place and, you know, there's not like a, there's no gasoline that people can buy, so people are never going never get, never to get cars. Right. Um, but people did say that. You know? um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.